Well, welcome to our broadcast today on the wonderful words of life. God bless you. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we will be talking about four of the nine gifts today. But before we begin, let's hear from the psalmist. Notice what the psalmist says. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant to and praise is beautiful. Amen. Praise God. Let's go ahead and do that. Heavenly Father, we praise you. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your mercy. We thank you, Father, for your strength, Lord, and your endurance. Praise God. Your long suffering. We love you, Father, with all of our heart, our mind, our soul, our strength. And Father, we love your word. Your word is perfect. And we thank you for it. Now, Lord, we're praying right now in the name of Jesus, and we're believing right now in the name of Jesus that, Father, that you will grant to us wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Speak to our hearts and our minds, Lord, concerning uh, your word. Your word is alive and powerful, Father God, and help us uh, to understand your will. And we give you thanks and praise for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, in the last session, we talked about two of the six gifts that we're going to be talking about. And I do want to remind you that the vocal gifts of diversities of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and the gift of prophecy, we're going to wait until we get into chapter 14 to talk about those three gifts Chapter 14, Paul breaks each of these gifts down and really explains to us uh, concerning their use, both in private devotion as well as in public assembly. So we're going to concern ourselves with uh, four gifts today. That is the gift of faith, the gifts of healing, the working of miracles, and then discerning of spirits. And notice that when Paul lists these gifts, he lists them uh, by importance. And the very first gift he listed was the word of wisdom. That's the word of his wisdom. We talked about that last time we were together. And then the word of knowledge. That is a word of his knowledge. Amen. And now we're going to be talking about the gift of faith. Now, what is the gift of faith? Notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, it says, And to another, faith by the same Spirit. Notice, each one of these gifts are by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we had mentioned that in the first 11 chapters of 1 Corinthians, Paul was speaking of carnalities, straightening up the things in the church that they were in the church at Corinth that they were not doing correctly. And after that, and after, it's interesting that after Paul talked about communion, then he begins to talk about spirituals. There's something about partaking of the bread and body of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we do it correctly, amen, that uh, clears the path, clears the way then, uh, empties out all of the carnality that we may have been guilty of and starts us on a fresh slate, a fresh start into the things of and pertaining to the Holy Spirit. That's really what the word spirituals means. And now we're in verse 9, and we're talking about faith. Now, this is not ordinary faith. It's not saving faith. This is what one translation calls wonder-working faith. And what this gift is, it's a special endowment of faith. It's almost like God is adding his faith to our faith that then believes God for a miracle or for something supernatural to take place. And we'll not spend a lot of time here because we have to move on. But the best example that I can think of is found in the Old Testament in First Kings chapter 18. And how Elijah had told the king, it's not going to rain in Israel but according to my word. Now think about that. The prophet is talking to the king. The king is the one that had power of life and death over his subjects. And Elijah was not afraid of the king. Now you've got to have a gift of faith and operation to be 
bold like this. And we'll see this as we go on. Now, he contended with the prophets of Baal, 400 of them up on Mount Carmel. You remember the story and how that he allowed the prophets of Baal to go first. They divided their carcass, they, uh, their sacrifice, they laid it on their altar and from on all day, even towards sundown, they beat, they cut themselves, they gave uh, and spoke incantations and nothing happened. And all the while they were going through their uh, ritual, Elijah was making fun of them. He was mocking them. Where's your God? And there was no fear at all in Elijah's heart concerning the prophets of Baal. 400. Now, we're talking about somebody 400 to 1. There was 400 prophets of Baal. There was only one prophet, Elijah. Now, what do you think would have happened if when Elijah's turn came, nothing happened? Well, I'll tell you exactly what would have happened. Ahab would have killed Elijah. Either that or he'd have given him over to the prophets of Baal and they would have killed him. But notice that there was a gift of faith in operation. Now, when Elijah cut up his sacrifice, placed it on the altar, he told those in attendance, you take water. Water was scarce. There was a severe drought going on. Why? Because Elijah said, it's not going to rain. It's not going to rain until I say it, it's going to rain. And so water was precious. It was a precious commodity. But Elijah told those standing by, now you get buckets of water and you water this sacrifice. And they watered that sacrifice so much that the uh, ditch around that altar was filled with water. And then Elijah prayed a simple prayer. And what happened? Fire came down from heaven and consumed that sacrifice, licked up the water. And the people of God were so mesmerized and so frightened by that display of raw power by Almighty God, uh, they began to declare the Lord, He is God, the Lord, He is God. And I'm sure that they were saying that because they were thinking that same fire that licked up that sacrifice uh, could fall on us and absolutely cremate us. And uh, so they were afraid. And of course, Elijah he told the people to grab the 400 prophets of Baal and they were all slain. And then uh, he went up on the top of Mount Carmel and he began to pray and make a long story short. Uh, rain came. See, that's a gift of faith and operation, believe in God for the working of miracles and, and really fire coming down from heaven. That was uh, um, a miracle and a demonstration of God's tremendous power. But now I want you, let's go a day further. Now, the day after, when news got back to Jezebel, what Elijah had done, she sent word to him and said, God, do so to me if by this day I do not have your head. And you know what Elijah did? He was stricken with fear. He was afraid and ran for his life, and God protected him supernaturally. But why was Elijah not afraid of Ahab and the 400 prophets of Baal, but then he was afraid of one woman? Well, it's because the, 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 uh, the gift of wonder-working faith was not in operation. Elijah then, was the next day, was back to him his own self. And see, that's very important. See, the gift of faith, that's a special endowment, amen, of God. When God adds, it's almost like God adds his faith to our faith that gives us the ability to believe God to work a miracle. Not to believe God for a miracle, amen, but to believe God to work a miracle. And that's, that's very, very important, amen. Abraham and Isaac. That was a, an example of the gift of faith. Abraham was ready to slay his son, and he believed that even if he did that, that God would raise him up. Well, you've got to have supernatural faith in order uh, to, to go to that extreme. And so uh, this is a wonderful gift. It's a gift that works in conjunction with the other power gifts. 
And uh, we'll see more of this gift in operation as we go along. Now, let's move on to the, another gift called the gifts of healings. Notice verse 9 again, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. All these gifts are gifts of the Spirit. Amen. And the Holy Spirit manifests them according to His will. Now, what is this supernatural gift of the Holy Spirit? Well, it is a special endowment to heal sickness and disease. Amen. It's not a revelation gift. It falls into the category of power gifts. Now, why do we have three gifts of the Spirit that are called power gifts? Well, Power gifts do exactly what the title means. They display God's power, but for what purpose? To bring glory to God. Amen. These power gifts are gifts that do something. The revelation gifts are gifts that enable somebody to see something or to reveal something to a person. The vocal gifts say something. Well, these power gifts, and notice that Paul now, he lists the three power gifts in succession, right after the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. He talks about uh, faith. He talks about the gifts of healings. And then he talks about the working of miracles. Amen. Now, this gift is not healing through medical science. God is in medical science to heal, but that's not this gift. Amen. Uh, what, whatever means that God uses to bring healing to people, I say thank God for it. No, the gifts of healings is a supernatural gift that brings healing to those who come into contact with this gift. And most of the time, when the gifts of healing are in operation, people are healed immediately. Now, listen to this. This is in the ministry of Peter. This is in Acts chapter 5, verses 15 and 16. And so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. Notice when the gifts of healing are in operation, everyone that needs healing gets healed. And I've been in services where the healing anointing through this manifestation of this gift was so strong that people that had not come up to be prayed for stayed in their seat. They rose up and they were healed. Deaf ears unstopped. Blinded eyes begin to see. This is a tremendous power gift. And it's all intended to bring glory to God and also to bring relief to those who are sick and diseased. I remember in the life and ministry of T.L. Osborne many, many years ago as he was ministering in India and in Africa, uh, he would have uh, meetings, uh, tremendous evangelistic meetings where hundreds of thousands would come. And he would preach to them for about an hour or so on the ministry of the Lord Jesus and then he at toward the end, when it came time to pray for the sick, he sometimes he would call people up on stage and sometimes he would just pray a blanket prayer. But what he would do is that he would challenge the people. He would say this Jesus whom I have preached to you that he raised from the dead is alive and he's here and I'm going to prove it to you. He's going to prove it to you because when I pray, he is going to heal you of your sickness and disease. Now, there were those in attendance that were blind. There were those that were deaf. There were those that were halt. They came there on beds and couches, some of them in the last stages of terminal illness uh, to uh, people that had brought them from many, many miles away uh, to be healed. And when T.L. Osborne prayed that prayer, the healing anointing went out over those thousands of people and people began holding up their crutches. People who were in their deathbed and on cot would automatically get up healed and delivered. 
And this is documented. All you have to do is just uh, go and uh, and search out these things about the tremendous revival meetings of T.L. Osborne in Africa and India. And you'll see firsthand documented evidence of the tremendous power and moving of Almighty God. Amen. Now, this tremendous passage of Scripture in Acts chapter 5 that I just read to you, isn't it interesting how the, the ministry of Peter in this instant mirrors the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ? The same anointing that was on Jesus to heal all was on Peter. And why is that? Because it's the same Holy Spirit. The same spirit that anointed Jesus to bring healing to people is the same spirit that was upon Peter to bring healing to people. And it's the same spirit, the same anointing from the same spirit that's on people today to bring healing to those that are sick. I remember many instances of healing. One time when my son was a young boy, he was very sick. He had fever, was listless. And uh, I was walking through the living room and and uh, and Patsy had uh, our son in his lap. And I could tell his face was red as a beet. He was burning up with a fever. And uh, so I went over and I said, what's the matter with uh, with my son, with our son? And Patsy told me, I laid my hands upon him in the name of Jesus. And I commanded that sickness to leave his body. And as soon as I did that, the power of God, I sensed the power of God. I sensed the anointing, that healing anointing went into my son. I know it went into my son because I was looking at him. I was looking at his face and he jolted. He actually jolted. And I could tell by his eyes and his little mind, he's thinking, wow, what happened to me? And, you know, that very second later, he jumped up and said, I'm going out to play. He was completely immediately healed from that sickness, that fever and that listlessness. That's that's the gifts of healing in operation. And that's happened in our family when our children were young many, 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 many times. Amen. I remember a few years back, my wife had injured her knee. She was uh, playing kickball with children at church and uh, something popped in her knee and the pain in her knee got so bad that she, all she could do was walk stiff legged. Well, um, she did that for several days. The, her knee wasn't getting any better. It was hurting more and more. So we went to the doctor and the doctor scheduled her for an MRI and the MRI came back and showed that she had a tear in her knee. Well, they, the doctor scheduled her for an operation and uh, the night before her, her knee was really, really hurting. She asked me to pray. I laid my hands and I prayed, laid my hands on her knee now and I prayed for her. And I sensed that same anointing that went into my son years earlier. I sensed that same anointing go into her knee. Amen. Praise God. And here she is now. She's, her knee is still sore. Uh, we, we go to the doctor the next day, go up. She's scheduled for surgery. She goes in uh, to, to uh, have her knee repaired. And in 45 minutes later, the doctor comes out, sits down in front of me, and says, Mr. Dunning, uh, we went in to scope her knee and we could not find a tear anywhere. The only thing we saw was just a few rough, rough places uh, on her kneecap and we sanded that down. But, uh, but the doctor was very, very, he was almost afraid. He was afraid, oh dear Lord, here comes a malpractice suit. We weren't going to sue the doctor because we knew exactly what happened. That healing anointing went in and affected a healing and a cure in my wife's knee. And God confirmed that the very next day when she went in for surgery and she didn't have to have any surgery. That knee was healed. Amen. Praise God. See, the gifts of healing. Praise God. But it's by the Spirit. It's not based upon our will. These gifts are manifested as the Spirit wills. Now, the ministry of Jesus. Listen to this in Luke chapter six. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed. 
and the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. That virtue is the power of God. That's the healing anointing that affects a healing and a cure immediately in people who are diseased, who are sick. And it just goes to what Jesus said uh, when he was in Nazareth. Notice he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And also in Mark chapter 16, and they went everywhere preaching the word, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. These manifestations of the power gift are intended Amen. To confirm the word preached about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, pastors, if you'll start teaching on healing, if you'll start teaching about miracles, and if your church will start praying for these to be manifested, for God to be glorified and for the church to be empowered, these things will begin to happen. Amen. Now, there's other ways and methods by which God heals. He heals through laying on of hands of the presbytery. He heals by simple faith, just believing God and believing his word. Amen. People have been healed that way. Praise God. And I say that's a wonderful, powerful gift. All right. Now, let's move on to the working of miracles. Notice verse nine again to another, the working of miracles. Now, what is this tremendous gift? Well, the working of miracles is a supernatural manifestation of the power of God that alters, suspends, or in some way controls the law of nature. And of course, you know, we know this in the book of Exodus when Moses was commanded by God to go to Pharaoh and to let his people uh, go. But notice what uh, Moses records in chapter 9, verse 16. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up speaking of Pharaoh, for to show in thee my power and that my name may be declared throughout all of the earth. And of course, we know exactly what took place with the 10 plagues. Each plague, amen, was God's power demonstrated over one of the gods of Egypt. And also coming over into the New Testament in John chapter 2, we see how that uh, Jesus turned water into wine. Verse 11 says, This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. See, that is what the power gifts are intended to display. God's power for the purpose of bringing glory to him so that people will believe. Oh, I tell you, this is a tremendous, tremendous gift of the spirit. Well, what about when Jesus fed the multi multitude with uh, just a, a few loaves of bread and fish? That was a miracle that altered the course of nature. There is no way in the natural that 5,000 besides women and children could be fed with just five loaves and two fish. The loaves of bread and the fish were multiplied through what? Through the working of miracles. And Jesus, operating by the gift of faith, Jesus had had faith without measure now. He didn't need the gift of faith in operation, but faith was present. Amen. You, you and I, we're the ones that need the gift of faith. Amen. Because we only have faith in a measure. That's why God adds his faith to our faith so that we can work a miracle. Now, there's not a lot of uh, incidences in the New Testament of the working of miracles. There are some, and we know that the churches in, in that century and in the century to, to follow, that the church was known to perform the working of miracles. We see this in Galatians uh, chapter 3 and verse 5. Notice Paul writes, he says, He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit. In other words, Spirit-led preaching, laying hands upon people to be filled with the Spirit, ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. The word is preached. People believe the word. They preach the word. 
They preach that God is a God of miracles. They preach the gifts of the Spirit. And what happens? The Holy Spirit confirms the word with signs following. Now, we know that Philip did miracles in Acts chapter 8, verses 6 and 7. Notice what it says. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake. Notice this. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. And then Luke records these miracles. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. Now notice here in this instance, not everyone was delivered. Not everyone was healed, but there were many that were healed. So this is a demonstration. Amen. And you have to believe, you have to believe that God is willing to do these things. There's a lot of people that don't. There are a lot of people that believe that all of these gifts passed away with the death of the apostles. They don't believe in miracles anymore, but yet they see miracles going on all around them, all over the world presently in present day. But yet they don't believe. That's terrible. It's like, uh, well, we'll not go there. We'll wait till we get over into the chapter 14 to talk about diversities of tongues. Uh, in Acts chapter 6 and verse 8, And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Amen. And so this is a tremendous. Now, Jesus raising the dead. That is a working of miracles. Peter raising Dorcas from the dead. That is a working of miracles. And matter of fact, raising the dead involves all three of the power gifts. There has to be the gift of faith and operation. Had to be in Peter, not necessarily in Jesus. The working of miracles definitely has to be in manifestation for somebody to be called out of death back into life. And of course, there has to be the gifts of healing and operation because uh, the reason the person died, uh, that condition has to be healed. Amen. Praise God. So a wonderful, wonderful gift. All right. We're going to go in the few minutes that we have left talking about the discerning of spirits. Now, what is this gift? This is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit that gives one the ability to see into the realm of spirits, actually see into the realm of spirits, to see into the spirit realm, not sense evil, not sense good, to actually see into the spirit realm. You're no longer seeing in the natural, you're seeing in the spirit. And the best example with the time that we have left is uh, a personal experience uh, when our son was younger. He, he became sick and this sickness would not go away. I mean, it lingered on for days after days after days. As a matter of fact, I think it was a week or two and he was tired and listless. You can look in his eyes. There was weakness in his eyes and we had prayed. We we're standing in faith, but nothing was improving. And then Patsy got down and began to pray about this. And then all of a sudden when she was praying, she saw in the spirit she was given a manifestation of the discerning of spirits. And what she saw, she saw this demon, demonic, devilish imp hanging on our son's chest because he was heavily congested. And so when Patsy saw this, she said, in the name of Jesus, you've got to leave. And that imp turned loose of our son and disappeared. That that vision that she had disappeared but I'm telling you, in about two days, our son was completely well. See, there was a demonic oppression that was oppressing, oppressing our son. And ordinary prayer and faith didn't produce enough power to take authority over that spirit. God allowed Patsy to see into the realm of spirits to know how to deal with that problem. And of course, when she commanded that spirit to leave... That's exactly what happened. Our son then got well. And then verse 11. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills. The ownership of these gifts belong to the Holy Spirit. They don't belong to us. And it's the spirit of God that chooses who he's going to use at what instance they are to occur. Even though the Holy Spirit may use a person on a regular basis concerning the manifestation of of the revelation and power gifts, the manifestation of these gifts is as the Spirit wills. So it's the Spirit of God who manages and distributes these gifts throughout the body of Christ as He wills. 
And I want to read a quote from Howard Carter. Notice what he writes. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are all miraculous, divinely miraculous. They bring into our midst the presence and power of God. This is what we are needing so greatly in the church today. God in mighty manifestation. And I say amen to that. Heavenly Father, let the word of your power so affect us, Lord, and create in us a hunger to see you move in a supernatural, mighty way in our lives personally and in our churches corporately. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if you were to die today, that you would be prepared for heaven? If you're not sure, then I encourage you to pray this prayer with me. Father God, I come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ. I repent and ask you to forgive me of my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I surrender my heart and life to you. By faith, I believe I receive you as my Lord and Savior, and I thank you for receiving me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed this prayer and desire to know more about the gift of Christ that the Heavenly Father offers you, then email us at rbtc86 at gmail.com. We will be glad to answer your questions promptly and provide you at your request with materials that will help you to grow in your faith in the Lord Jesus. This is Patsy Dunning. Thank you for listening to our broadcast today. And let me remind you to tune in to this station at the same time next week to hear more of the wonderful words of life. God bless you and remember what Jesus said. It is the Spirit who gives life.